but one of the things that I think is confusing is that a lot of people who are familiar with the survivors and what's happened to them afterwards is that a lot of them have received reparations from Germany. Yes, yes. So why is it that these people have fallen through the cracks? Because the German government was very clear and they said that only certain people are considered survivors. Although, the, you have to, I think it was something like 68 countries were involved in the Holocaust in World War II, right? Germany only gives reparations to a very narrow few, and only those people who were in concentration camps and a few other particular circumstances. Everyone else, whether you were a slave laborer, a partisan, you know, whether you were tortured and imprisoned, no matter what happened to you, ghettoized, it doesn't count according to Germany. So that's important to distinguish yes. that people went through all of those things, even and, yeah. not being in a concentration camp. Yeah, terrible things. I mean, there were things called the Einsatzgruppen, which were the mobile killing squads. They fanned out and went all through Eastern Europe systematically, re torturing and then killing and then burning every man, woman, and child and town. Hundreds and hundreds of towns throughout Belarus and Ukraine were were just decimated that way. As a matter of fact, there's a, there's a priest now who's going through Ukraine and they're uncovering all these mass graves and still talking to some of the perpetrators and taking their confession because now this is all coming to the surface that there is even more than we ever thought. You know, right, there's, and there's only so much time to document yes, at this point. Yes, exactly. But everywhere you, I mean, you could put a shovel in the ground in Eastern Europe and come up with human bones because there's just millions and hmm. millions of towns that are no more. Even the towns of my grandmother's you know, I had her street address. I was so excited. And then the numbers stopped. And I said, well, wait a second. You know, she's number 55 on this street. And they said, oh, that's where the, they, they burned the town. And from then on, you know. And it's the, remained that way. Yeah, they never rebuilt it. That's it. So the hmm. towns, oh, yeah. I mean, there are towns that are no more at all, you know, that are just like you see a little bit of concrete in the, you know, foundations left and then tall weeds because, you know, I mean, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of towns were burned. So these people, you heard about Auschwitz, which was a horror and a nightmare, and you hear about all those horrors, they were equal horrors, you know, people not in prisons that Germany should pay for that doesn't. So these people are getting nothing. And so what is it that the money that you do to help them? You provide... We put, the Survivor Mitzvah Project is the only project in the world, absolutely unbelievable but true, that's a, that, that provides direct cash donations to these people. So every month or every six weeks, they will get enough money in cash to survive by medicine, by what they need. There are some other organizations that give occasional food packets and things like that, but a lot of them can't use them because they either they can't eat the things that are in the food packets because they have all kinds of diseases, or Food packets are only available to people who can go get them. Mm. So, for example, and I'll just show you a little example. I mean, I just visited this woman, um, Malka Radish, born in 1909. I just, just saw her. She's, uh, she lies in a bed. She's outlived her children, her grandchildren, their wives, their children. She's totally alone and a neighbor, thank goodness, you know, uh, uh, stops in and, and sees her. She can't go get a food package. Right. A food package that's waiting for her 30 miles away is no good. Mm -hmm. But I can give her, you know, forty dollars or fifty dollars, and this is life to her. How long will that will that forty to fifty dollars last? A, a month at least. Hmm. And she can get anything that she can eat, or if she needs medicine, or if she needs uh, syringes, or if she needs help in the apartment, she can hire somebody. This is life to her. And so it's a whole it's a whole different thing. I mean, some of the people write that they say, you know, this is life to me. A, a woman, uh, I think, it's a, a woman in Belarus wrote to me. She said, I am eighty eight years old. And what you're sending me is life to me because I am 88 and I want to live, you know. That's great. Yeah. So. And I mean, and if you look at the web website, survivormitzvah.org. Yes, go there. Then <laughs> it's full of testimonials and uh, yes, you can there, read a lot more stories. We yes. have a lot more to talk about. We have to run for okay. a quick break. Okay. But stay tuned for more See You at USC right after this. Oh, Go to bornlearning.org. Hello, and welcome back to See You at USC. I'm your host, Lara Berman. And before we get back to our guest, Zane Busby, I want to give you our contact information. We've been on the air 10 years and want to keep it that way, so please feel free to give us your comments and suggestions. You can reach us at 213-743-2741, or you can email us at cu at trojanvision.com. 
Now back to director, producer, and actress Zane Busby. And what Hello. was the new term that we learned? Uh, philanthropical oh, entrepreneur. So, social entrepreneur. Social entrepreneur, which right. is very appropriate given right. this project that you yes. started, the Survivor Mitzvah project that we've been talking about. Before the break, we were learning about some of the people, but how do you find the people that you're going to help? The, the people are identified. I told you about this, this fabulous person, David Katz. He's a uh, right. professor. He started the Yiddish program at Oxford and then is the head of the Vilnius Yiddish Institute. He's a great guy. He's an American, and he's very funny and wonderful and brilliant, and he's authored a lot of books. He goes still all the time to Eastern Europe, and, and he lives there half the year and finds these people. He's, he's, he's interviewing them for other purposes, but while he's in this particular town, he will always seek out the oldest or the sickest or whatever. He will interview them. He will vet them totally. He, we will know, do they get a pension? How much do they get? What are their needs? Do they have arthritis? We will find out everything about them. And then if he feels that this is a person who can't survive without some help, is not going to make it, he emails me and says, put them on the list. Mm -hmm. He just gave me a list of 50 Latvians. He, he, we had never been to Latvia before. And he said, these people have got to get on the list immediately. And so we're looking for, for donors to help them. We, I have 50 people now who have no one to help them, and I don't have enough money to help them. You know, that's an incredible endeavor to just walk, I assume, through Europe. Because it's not like if these people can't afford corn, <laughs> how are they going to get a laptop <laughs> or a wireless connection? Oh, they, so, they don't have anything. That, they wouldn't even know what the internet is. So they was, can't like. come forward. No. They need to be found. Right. And they also, there's no one to advocate for them. There are not, the, the infrastructures of these countries have totally collapsed. Plus, a lot of them are still living in very anti-Semitic places where they don't want to make noise. They don't want anyone to know someone's visiting them. You know, th this is, there, there was a woman, uh, it's on the website, she was brutally murdered. Um, after she gave some testimony to the killers of, of the people in her town. She was murdered in 1998. I mean, she's a very, very old lady. I mean, a war hero. She has medals and everything. You know, a, a woman, um, you know, sim similar to, uh, there's a wonderful picture of, of a woman here who has um, many, 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 oh, it's not, and it's not here. <laughs> but, you know, people like this, the, the, the heroes, you know, people like this who are absolute war heroes, and yet their neighbors would kill them tomorrow, you know. <laughs>